Good morning. My name's Ray. I'm with Team Steam. And this morning, I'm doing a little garden walking and pondering the wide world of insects. Now, if you've seen any of my work or very many of my, my videos, you know that I'll go to the world of insects with some frequency because it's interesting and they're neat looking and, and uh, why not? There's a lot of them, a lot of them in the garden. And in the garden for us this year, it's been kind of a stunted year. We've been about three weeks behind on everything all year. And fall seems to be holding out. We're hoping it does. And now that some of these uh, plants are, are starting to come on really strong, like some of the zucchini and some of these, um, we need the bumblebees more than ever. And the, you know what? They're here. They're here. The garden's full of them. And they're helping out every single day. And that got me to thinking. I build models and art and all sorts of things of all sorts of different insects. And I haven't paid any tribute to the bee who actually shows up and does us a heck of a service every single year. So let's build a bee. Now, I used to keep bees at one point in time for a couple seasons we did. And we had as many as six hives at once. Um, but it turned out that the level of professionalism and diligence that you have to have to keep bees was beyond what I'm apparently capable of because I got tired of it and we got out of it. We traded off all of our stuff for some other stuff and just got out of the, uh, the business entirely. And now we go to a place and we buy our honey like everybody else. And this is left over from my beekeeping career. When I traded off all my stuff, I did, I traded it to a guy that has 630 some other hives. And when I traded that off to him, what happened was he, uh, uh, I traded him all of that stuff for seven or eight gallons of honey. And then um, later on, I got a hold of him and did another trade and got basically gave him a lawnmower. He had a big riding lawnmower to mow out and around all of his stuff, but I had a smaller version of it that was in awesome shape, almost had never been used. And I ended up trading that to him too. But, and that's a whole different set of stories. But anyway, I gave him all my beekeeping stuff, all my extra hive stuff, everything except for one suit, one complete suit in case I ever need it. You run into a swarm or something in your life. It's good to know you can, you can run and grab a suit and deal with it. And then, and then this, I gave him my, my other smoker and, um, I kept this one for no good reason. It's still in really good shape, but I don't need it for anything. It's just been in storage and I'm never going to keep bees again. So uh, this is what I'm going to use for my, my bee design because I love how this resembles a stinger and this could be a body. All right, so we got some materials gathered. This is just a uh, chrome piece off of a probably 2001 Peterbilt. Um, this is, of course, my smoker. These are for mirrors. They hold a mirror on a semi. And when you, they have the bigger tube and the smaller tube, and I'm looking for the smaller tube. So when you pull these apart, this is what you end up with. And that's what I'm looking for, three of those. And then I've got an old, very bent up exhaust cover. And that's the bulk of the materials I'm gonna to need to build this bee. Okay, so I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do with the legs. And next I'm working on the head. And what I wanna try and do is I uh, trace this initially by using this uh, barbecue cover as a curve template and then I cut it out I don't know if it's going to work or not for sure so rather than cut all these out of steel first I'm going to go ahead and I traced it on there a bunch of times and now I'm going to cut all these out and then I'm going to see if I can't form this head how I want to form it and make it look how I want it to look the basic shape of the head with these and if I can do that then I'll go ahead and mod or, uh, cut these out of um, steel but if I can't I'll modify them and uh, mess with them until they do work. And then I'll take that design and cut it out of steel. So I've got them all cut out. And what I did was I cut one of them considerably thinner than the rest. And that's this very outside one. And then the rest of them are all the same. And I've arranged them in this sort of arrangement. This is gonna be close. This isn't the 100% duplicate of what I'm gonna end up with, but it does let me know that I'm on the right track and I can go ahead and cut out all of these bands out of steel because I think I can make this work and give it enough of a rough B head shape that it'll pass. And these guys are what mounts a mirror to a truck hood. When you, know, when you see those semis sometimes that have mirrors clear out on the hood, this is what mounts those to the hood. And this part right here goes through that. And then this part right here mounts to the hood, goes all the way through. So what I've done is I've just simply taken these off and these two pieces, I'm gonna conform into bug eyes. So here I'm gonna go ahead and empty out my uh, 
my uh, smoker. And now I've taken these, a couple of these shorter ones, traced them all off here. Got everything I need traced off here. Now I just need to uh, get to cutting them out. And now I've got them all cut out. There's six of them that are this size. One of them that's about half as wide as this. That's the one that'll go out in the very, very front. That's this guy, it's about a half as wide or two thirds as wide. A couple of end ones that are gonna go under the ends of it. You'll see what I mean. They're, so they're gonna be shorter so the ends aren't, aren't in the way with everything else that's already gonna be in the way. It's gonna get a little crowded with all these poked in there together. I can see with this, the tighter in you get, the more the stuff that there is gonna be in there. And so that's what we're looking at. But first I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna try and roll them around this old landscaping timber, which as you can see is roundish. And I'm gonna try and roll them over that and uh, see if I can get a curvature that I'm happy with. If I can't use this, I'll get a piece of pipe or something like that, but it'll be around this size. Okay, I ended up using this cardboard uh, roller instead. Uh, it came out of the center of a plastic roll. Um, got them all done. Now I'm gonna begin assembling them and tacking them in place. All right, so now I've got them all put together and taped together. That's about where they're gonna be. These two will go in last and now I'm going to find some strategic places like right along here where my thumb is and weld these up. So this all holds itself together so it doesn't need the tape anymore. And then I'm gonna weld those two in place. So it's all welded up and it's ready to, uh, it's ready for me to go ahead and mount on here and we'll figure out how to do that and how we're gonna do some eyes. All right, so I've got it placed and I've got it welded together. Now I've got my basic B shape. Now I'm gonna work on some wings, legs, flower, all the other elements. All right, so I got these cut out. I've got them dish shaped. I went ahead and put them in the vise and then beat on them this way with a, a punch and dish shaped them out and then I cut them to an oval. Now I'm going to plug off this with tape and do body work on the outside to get this to be all the same size of dome and then I'll paint them black. Then they'll be ready. So now I've got my wing design figured out uh, sketched onto here, cut it out. I cut it out a little bit bigger than my sketch. I like the measurement a little bit better. And then I went ahead and uh, traced it off onto here in a couple spots. And this bent up old piece of uh, stainless off of an exhaust, off a semi. And I'll go ahead and uh, cut these guys out and then I'll have my wings. And now I've got them all cut out. Got the sides ground so they're not uh, gonna cut anybody. And I'll flatten them out a little bit more and they'll be ready to go. Now here I've got this uh, bent up lightweight trampoline pole it would go on the uh, upper guard the netting to keep kids from falling off probably and it's been bent up must have got caught in a windstorm or something and then i've got this just out of my material pile it's just a i'm not sure what it came off of but it is made of tin or metal of some sort and then this just piece of pallet wood from one of the sides of a pallet and then this wing it's a sleeper wing off of a peterbilt that i just painted and rather than go put it in the pile with the other wings just like it, I'm gonna go ahead and use it uh, as well. So I'm gonna take this, trace it on here, cut that out, put the piece that I get from this up inside of this, cut the pole off about here, put one end of it in a car wheel and to get rid of this all together and then cut petals out of, and a couple of leaves out of this wing and then fasten the whole thing together and I'll have me a flower. Now here what I've done is I've used this, this fire pit cover once again for its shape to trace that shape onto this, some of, some of this uh, filing cabinet paper. And I cut these out. This, my cabinet paper wasn't big enough so I just did part of it and that's all I needed because I put it here, flipped it over and finished it out. So I got what I needed. Little tabs here on the end so I can bend those tabs when they're cut out this is what I'm talking about, this little tab right here, like a little stem, and it'll be bent down. So will that one, two leaves. And the rest of these are petals. Eight petals so far, if I need more I will, and two leaves. And I'm gonna cut these out and kind of emboss the leaves, if you wanna call it that. Not really, but it, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna dent them in a way that makes them look like they look like a leaf. And uh, then we'll go from there. Now I got this cut out with a hole saw bit just out of this piece of wood here and it fits nicely inside of here nice and snug I'm gonna make this hole this size and that's one of the next things I'll do 
and I'm gonna get those uh, petals cut out. So here I've got them all cut out. I've got the ends bent. Here I've got these two leaves cut out and I went ahead and uh, beat on them a little bit with this guy and got some good texture in them to make them look like real leaves or closer to leaves. And now I'm gonna start prepping everything for paint. All right, so I originally had six of these. I went ahead and cut out four more, giving me 10. And uh, I've get, got this uh, kind of overlaid design here. This is actually gonna be turned over and faced the other way. It, but for the sake of just putting it all together and having it, seeing how it looks, this is how I've got it sitting. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand all this stuff, get it all ready, get it all in paint. All right, I'm about ready to do some priming here. I'm gonna be priming in beige. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime each one of these. I'm gonna hold them up, prime them, and then put them up like that. So only thing touching is the end of that and the very end of that. And I'm gonna line these with them, six per can. And then uh, they'll be primed in beige. These will be primed in beige, even though they're gonna be painted in green. These will be painted in bright yellow. This will be painted in brown. This will be painted in brown, but it's all going to be primed in beige, including this. So I'm about ready to uh, get some priming done and let them get dried. And just before I prime, I'm going to take this drill and I'm going to drill a hole in every single one of these right in the middle of these guys. That way that's just out of the way and we're not scuffing primer or paint with the drill when, when we go to do it. So we'll just do it now. All right, so I've got the paint on. I just grabbed each one, painted it, and then set it over there. That's why I was able to put different colors on the same table. So we've got the green leaves and the yellow petals, the brown centerpiece. These are just to remind me to finish these eyes here today so I don't keep doing other stuff and not get those done. Green hose clamp. Green stem and brown, and I did those at the same time because this is actually gonna be buried. It's not actually gonna matter. It's just because I had enough brown left over and who cares, you know, but, and because it, it always helps if it's protected by something, it'll last longer. Although a steel wheel in the ground is going to last a hundred years. So, uh, I just went ahead and did it brown because it didn't need to be all green. And now we'll give this stuff some time to dry and we'll, uh, work on the eyes. And here I've got those mirror, uh, bracket holders and I've got them oblonged, cup shaped. And then I put some, uh, tape on the backside body work on the outside and then I removed the tape once the body work set up and now I've got them all sanded and ready for some primer so we get primed and painted and then they'll they'll look like bug eyes all right so we have the eyes finished and painted they'll probably need another coat now what I'm doing here is I'm taking these pieces of uh bracketry they're meant to hold a mirror on the hood of a semi and I've got them marked I've got one of them cut this is the before this is the after. I cut it into two of these. And then I notched one of these with this chop saw and then bent them over. So it'll look like that. I'm going to do something very similar to the other five. And um, that's going to be my leg design. Now here I've got my welder set up on a TV tray that's no longer in use in the house area. We just use it out here. And uh, I've got it hanging off the back of this so I get my trajectory just right. I moved that around a few different places to get this just right so it would hold it. I had a screwdriver sticking through there, but this is going to work a little better. Then I've got my six legs ready. I'm going to start selecting where I'm going to put them and weld them in place. And so I've got all six legs welded on. Now I'm going to take it off this little bitty miniature cute bungee, put it over here on this little workstation that I set up, and start figuring out what I'm going to do with these wings. All right, got it over here. It's pretty stable, actually. It could sit on a tabletop just fine. I didn't mean for it to, but it could. Now I'm going to start figuring out exactly how I want these wings to set, and then I'm gonna weld them in place as well. And so here I've got one of the wings welded on. I fitted them both to make sure that it's gonna end up in the middle about where I need it to where it just touches the bottom of the other one. This angle is right where I want it. And what I've done is I just welded from the bottom side of this, from the underside, through this hole, right across the hole, just filled the whole thing in with weld. So you can see we got great penetration and uh, it's good and welded for being just a tiny, couple of tiny little welds. And then I left the circular shape 
that was originally on the muffler itself, the muffler cover itself, so it would have a little bit of strength in case anything happens. You know, if it's left out in the yard and gets a snow load or a cat jumps up on it or something, it's going to be less likely to just fold the wings up because, as you can see, it still has that curvature to it. And it's just welded at the corners. And now I've done the same thing here. I've spot welded it right through that little, right through those two little holes that were already in this. They had the screws in them that held it to the billows. And I decided not to attack weld it in the center because I actually kind of like this action. A little bit better, right? That's pretty cool. You get them going in unison. That's pretty neat. And you, it could go a long time because it's just being taken up in the spring action of this entire thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. I like it. These are all painted and dry and ready for assembly. This is painted dry and ready for assembly. And this is built and ready for assembly and the installation of the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead, get started on the assembly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this green hose clamp, slip it down on here, take this leaf end, and this leaf end, which you can see are notched and very narrow. And they're in the, about the position I want. And then I'm going to put them at about the height I want. Bring this up around. It'll already be laying down there. Slide it up around it all. Tighten it up quick. And uh, have the leaves where I want them to be. So now I've taken this uh, hose clamp, like I mentioned. I put it on there. Slipped these on there. Held the whole thing together. And then adjusted it out. And it's at about the right height. It's about where I want those leaves to be. All right, I got it uh, hollowed out just enough that it's a very snug fit and I tapped it down on there with a mallet. So now it's on there, it's on there really good. But it's still removable. If I wanted to really get with it, I could take this all apart. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on here. And then I'm going to take one of these, mount it strategically in just the right spot, drill a little bitty hole with this little bitty drill bit and then take these short drywall screws with this screw gun and attach one at a time all 12 leaves and then screwing it in. And then when I'm all done, I will touch up all of these and the screws all the way around with brown. So here we have half the pedals left and half the pedals installed. And now I'm going to split the difference between each one and install the second row. Okay, so the flower is completely ready to receive this B. And now here I've drilled a little hole right there that I intend to mount this to the flower on. All right, we've got the guy mounted. We've got it uh, all bolted in place. Good and solid. Everything is holding up just fine. <clears throat> Ends of the little legs are touching just like I wanted. So I'm real happy with that. Now I'm just gonna mount the eye. So. I initially used double stick tape to hold the lights where I want them and now I've got them just tack welded. And uh, that's all you need, they're not going anywhere. So now that's on there permanently. And uh, this guy's finished, that's all there is to it. Put that wheel under the ground and we're done. All right, so we finished up another garden art project and let's, uh, let's go ahead and have a look at it. All right, so here we are made out of semi parts, and stainless, trampoline pole, hose clamp, Ford wheel, bee smoker, and some drywall screws. I think it turned out nice. Well, that about does it for this build. Another one in the books. Turned out pretty cute and didn't cost a single thing. Uh, if you actually like this video or this project, hit the like button. It'd help out quite a bit. And if you haven't subscribed already, you should consider it because we're doing this sort of thing all the time. See you guys around.